While the gunner is well known for his pure raw bullet damage, sometimes people want to spice things up a little bit, both figuratively and quite literally. If this is the case for you, then look no further than this high heated flame warden build. The Gunner is certainly a class that has many different build options available to him. Most of the time, people see the Gunner as a simple bullet hose that likes to tape his finger to the trigger and wait for the room to clear. Which is mostly true, but sometimes a setup comes along to help add some extra flair to his playstyle. That's the case today because we have a build that is not only very fun and effective, but also allows the Gunner to channel his inner driller by setting everything around him on fire. And I'm realizing now that I have done several build videos at this point revolving around burning things and and I'm thinking now that I have some kind of a problem. Never, no. of course not. <laughs> in any event, we are going to go through what I have affectionately named the Flame Warden build for the Gunner class in Deep Rock Galactic. By the way, if you want to see more build videos or just more videos in general, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell and like so you never miss another build video or upload. I'll kill anything with more legs than two. This build is a little bit eccentric and one that puts the gunner class into a unique position in regards to combat. In terms of equipment, this build is for the most part simple to acquire since it uses the default gunner weapons, being the Leadstorm minigun and the Bulldog heavy revolver. The only things that may be difficult to gain access to are the overclocks for this setup, those being Burning Hell for the minigun and Volatile Bullets for the Bulldog. Again, keep in mind that the recommendations that I give should not be viewed as the absolute undisputed choices for this build, but rather a generic guide to help you get through the early stages of the game. As such, feel free to experiment with certain tweaks to the upgrade choices if you find ones that work better for you. So getting into the actual gameplay of this particular build and how it's meant to be used, this build focuses on doing very high amounts of damage and being up close and personal with bugs for maximum effectiveness. It revolves around doing burning damage at close range and keeping the heat levels on your minigun as high as possible, and depending on your specific setup, maybe even maxing it out. The main centerpiece of this build is the Leadstorm minigun, specifically using the Burning Hell Overclock to melt anything in front of you. This is the primary way you will be using the minigun for taking out swarms and even the the bigger and badder targets. You're going to want to keep close enough to the bugs at all times, that way you have maximum heat power coming out. To assist in your burning power, for our secondary weapon we are running the Bulldog Heavy Revolver. The Bulldog is a fantastic weapon at dealing strong burst damage, and in this build in particular, the use of volatile bullets allows us to accelerate the burning capabilities of our minigun even better. You want to apply the burning effect to as many enemies in question with the minigun, and when they try to get away from you, just pull out your trusty big iron and finish them off instantly. One last thing to note about the this build gameplay is that it synergizes really, really well with almost any kind of driller build, especially one revolving around fire as well. So if you want to tag team insanely large hordes with your driller friend, then this build will do you wonders. So now going into the actual loadout of the build, first we of course have our perk choices. For this build, since we are going to be up close and personal with the bugs most of the time, we want to have the ability to stay alive in those situations as much as possible and mitigate damage as much as we can. For passive perks, my first choice is going to be thorns. Since we will be closer than we normally want to be, we want to deal even more damage that can also take the pressure off of us in a very unique way. Plus it helps to keep those little swarmers from gnawing at our ankles. Next we are actually running vampire. Since we are going to be so close to the bugs, we might as well use our melee range to our advantage that can help keep us alive as well. Lastly, elemental insulation just gives us some extra elemental damage reduction, but if you wanted, you could swap this out for something like resupplier and be just fine. For active perks, an immediate first pick is dash. We want to get in and out of the swarms as fast as possible to make good use of our equipment. This perk lets us do just that, giving us insane speed to be able to get around the battlefield quickly. It lets us get in and out of danger very, very fast. The second choice is Iron Will for pretty obvious reasons. Since we will be very close to enemies, we have a very good chance of going down, and sometimes in relatively bad positions. This allows us to either save ourselves directly or put us in a better position for our teammates to get us up if we do happen to go down in a bad spot. Again, these are just what I have been using in my experience, so if you want to try to use other perks that you think would work better, then by all means, use whatever is the most comfortable. Now getting into the core setup of the build with the weapons and equipment. We're going to start with our throwable grenade, which for this build is going to be the incendiary grenade, and that's for a few reasons. For one, it causes fire, which can be good for several aspects of our builds and even other builds from our teammates. Second, it covers a very wide area, which is something that this build does not have a lot of ways to do depending on the setup. However, if you find a grenade that works better for you or you don't want to hurt your teammates as much because of the heavy AoE, then you might want to consider another option. 
Moving on to the actual weapons and their upgrades, our primary weapon is of course the Lead Storm Powered Minigun. This thing is able to pump out some serious damage, and for our purposes, we wanted to have as much damage output and ammo as possible, as well as the ability to stay close to the bugs as long as possible. And the reason we want to stay close to the bugs is because of our overclock choice, which is the aforementioned Burning Hell. This thing is where our bullet and fire damage comes from. It gives us the ability to burn any enemy that is directly in front of the gun itself, turning the minigun into almost like a mini flamethrower that can also hit with bullets. It does, however, cause the gun to overheat a lot faster, so we want to have some ways to help manage our heat buildup, or potentially use it to our advantage, which we will go over later. To accomplish our goal, in the first tier, I went with the improved motor for faster rate of fire. While while it may be tempting to take the better cooling with this setup, we want to maintain a high damage output and the rate of fire does just that. Plus, as you will see later, getting overheated may actually help us in the long run. Moving on to the second tier, I chose the oversized drum to give us plenty more ammo to use for bug slaying. If you are more comfortable with ammo or find that ammo is never really an issue here, you could swap this out for the high velocity rounds, but in my practice, we do more damage with the fire than with the bullets themselves. The third tier is really a personal preference choice depending on A, what mission type you are doing and what your personal playstyle is like. But for me, I like to take the hardened rounds to deal with those annoying armor for dreadnoughts and other tough bugs, but really any choice here will do just fine. In the fourth tier, I chose the lighter barrel assembly to shorten the spin-up time for faster shooting and in turn, faster burning. Again, the direct damage we do is not really a problem and the magnetic springs don't really do a whole lot for us with this particular setup. Then lastly, in the fifth tier, there are two potential options that you could go. If you want to go full into the fire spewing theme, then you can go with hot bullets to apply even more burning damage when you reach high temperatures. This can help you apply even more flames to the enemy swarms at the cost of having to manage your heat more carefully. It also gives you a little bit more range than the other setup that we'll be using. However, if you want to be a little bit more ambitious, you could go with what I chose to run, which is aggressive venting. This makes it so that way when your weapon overheats, it will release a large blast around you that both deals damage and fears enemies around you. Not only is this really good for keeping the pressure off of us because we will be close to the bugs anyway, but then we don't need to be as worried about heat management because if we do overheat, then that's just more damage we are putting out. Plus, we will be overheated for less time. Whichever one you choose, the weapon will still handle just fine, so it kind of just comes down to how much you want to manage heat levels. Moving over to the Bulldog, our main goal with this weapon is to be able to deal high amounts of burst damage at range and especially be able to capitalize on all the burning that we are doing. First, talking about the overclock choice, we are using the Volatile Bullets. These make it so that way while the Bulldog does less direct damage, it does a truck ton more damage to burning enemies which is very convenient since this whole build revolves around fire and burning. Once you set those bigger, more annoying bugs on fire, you can finish them off quickly with just a few shots. In the first tier, I chose the quick fire ejector for a faster reload. Here the accuracy doesn't do a whole lot for us, so being able to reload much faster means we can get more let down range. On that note, in the second tier, I went with the expanded ammo bags for more reserves. Remember that the direct damage this weapon is doing is going to be lower anyway, so we don't really need to lean into it with this setup. You could use the floating barrel for a little more control if you want, but in my experience, it doesn't help as much as I would want. The third tier, similar to the minigun, you could really choose any option here and be fine, but for this setup, I went with the super blow through rounds to help us pierce through enemies. However, if you want to go with explosive rounds or hollow point bullets, those will work just fine, and this one really just depends on your personal preference. In the fourth tier, I went with further expanded ammo bags to again give us more ammo to use. But if you think that your ammo is lasting enough or this is a little bit overkill, then you can swap this one out for the high velocity rounds if you want. Finally, in the fifth tier, we went with neurotoxin coating to help add even more damage over time as well as a slowdown to the bugs. This can help give the Bulldogs even more damage output on tough enemies and help us slow down hordes if need be. Lastly, briefly going over the upgrades for the rest of the gunner's equipment, for the shield generator, I have a very simple setup. First, I went with the improved projector in tier 1 for a larger coverage, and then in tiers 2 and 3, I went with the larger capacitors for a longer duration. I like my shields to last as long as possible since I feel like the default time is barely anything, but that's just my personal preference. For the zipline launcher, I went with the expanded bags in tier 1 for more ammo, reinforced cable is the only option in tier 2, and I chose the disconnection protection in tier 3, which this is the very first time I am reading this mod out loud and realizing how funny it sounds in order to save us in case we get knocked off. Finally, for our armor rig, I have the standard setup that I like to use, with the improved generator in tier 1 to get our shields back faster, healthy in tier 2 for us to be more durable, hazmat system is the only option in tier 3, and lastly, breathing room in tier 4 to help us in a pinch if we do go down. 
So I'll give you my final thoughts on this build. First and foremost, this build is probably a little bit more complex and harder than the ones I have made so far. It's not the hardest build in the world, but it definitely requires a little bit more concentration than the ones I've done previously. That being said, if you can focus and play it properly, it can be very effective and also incredibly fun to use. It's definitely a build that is very rewarding for aggressive and close quarters play, which may be difficult at first, but once you get used to it, it can be really good to just be in the thick of the crowd of enemies and set them all ablaze with all the flame effects that we have. If you like the gunner and want to have some more interesting ways to do damage, then this build might be pretty good for you. And again, remember that you can go with the hot bullets route if you don't like the idea of being super close all of the time. This is definitely one of the more fun builds that I have made recently, and I can see myself using this for quite a long time. Well, there you have the Flame Warden build for the Gunner to help you merge what you love about the Driller and the Gunner into one beautiful package. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and are excited to see more build videos in the future as I had a ton of fun making this one. If you guys want to see more new player focused builds or more advanced ones involving more overclocks and higher level strats, let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like because it tells me what types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.